I still haven't gone to go listen to that song. The Magic Mike song? A Hot Girl Summer? Yeah. Have you seen Magic Mike? <laughs> Magic Mike's Mike. a good movie. <laughs> That's, I like how we're starting off with continuity from exactly where we left. <laughs> I've just been podcast. sitting in my chair for a whole week <laughs> thinking about but not listening to Uncle <laughs> uh, this is This is the lore of newbie Star Trek, everybody. What oh. shitty lore? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Dan? You know what? You know what? You hey, know it's what? my lore. I get to call it what I want. That's true. That's true. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to newbie Star Trek. It's I'm, a podcast. It's a podcast. I'm Marvin. I'm here with Ricardo and Dan. Hello, everyone. Hey, Hello. I'm Dan. You can find <laughs> you can find me. It's Ricardo. You can find me on OnlyFans <laughs> as El Mago Miguel. Someone is on there, probably as, as El Mago uh, Miguel. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Don't, 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 don't go for <laughs> Well, you know what? He no, needs it. He needs the money. Go, go support there, him. Yeah, yeah, if he's there, give yeah. him. Yeah, check him out. El know, Mago there. Miguel is the <laughs> magic well, yeah, mic. Yeah, check Spanish. him out before you give money. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, also sure. true. Yeah, yeah you, you don't never, know, you never yeah. know. We're we're yeah. treading lightly here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't we yeah. don't know for sure. We don't know if it's yeah. like white supremacist porn. Yeah, we don't know. Usually, <laughs> yeah, usually <laughs> they're pretty. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's such a yeah. thing. Oh, of course <laughs> there is. Yeah. Of course there fucking is. Like hey, like you're jacking off with the with the Nazi like swastika or something yeah. you know i don't know hey if you're a new listener <laughs> welcome <laughs> well, yeah we newbies star trek yeah what a great way to introduce a new listener uh yeah. um, if you if, if you don't know what the podcast is about because you're new basically ricardo before the podcast had never seen any star trek series at all no so we are taking him on a journey through all of star trek and we're going through tng right now and this week we went through episode eight of season two, A Matter of Honor, which is a very Klingon heavy episode. Therefore, it's a lot of big, dumb, stupid fun because Klingons are fun and they're dumb and they hit. Yeah, they're, they, yeah they're really <laughs> dumb uh, and a little racist. Uh, it'll yes. <laughs> um, Especially if you go at talking to people in interviews after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think you saw the same interview I, I saw. I, yes, I think I did. <laughs> this time I looked at the stuff. And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> That's not a great way to talk about it, Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice. <laughs> Oh yeah. man! Oh man! Uh, we'll, 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 we'll we'll get into that. Um, uh, sorry, we took a week off last week. By the way, uh, I had to go to a wedding. Um, yeah, it was a Klingon wedding. It had to be stopped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't care about which Klingons are marrying yeah. which. The, which Rikers? The groom. The groom had to fight the best man, and <laughs> if he had lost, the best man had to marry the bride. <laughs> Rules. I, I imagine that probably might be what a Klingon yeah. wedding yeah. would entail. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of fight, at least. Yeah. yeah, it has to be a fight. You know, you fight your father or you fight, you probably fight your bride's father. Yeah. You know? Yes. You yeah. know, that's almost certainly what happens. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, man. But anyway, this, this episode, A Matter of Honor, it aired on February 6th of 1989. Dan. Oh, was it February 8th? Oh, I thought it was February 6th. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh, that same it's week, one or the other. Same week. It was. It's a couple of days apart. It's, right? it's it's in that. It's far enough away from present day that no one will care. <laughs> yeah. It's, Let's just say that. So we're gonna go around the sun, but we're gonna go either a little too far or a little too short, and uh, we'll see. Woo! All right. Uh, so, um, between this week and the week previous, a military coup in Paraguay overthrew the then dictator Alfredo Stresner, ending his 45 year run as dictator of Paraguay. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a pretty doesn't, long ass run for doesn't him. Doesn't Paraguay sound like a delicious, like, tropical fo- food? Like, hey, give me some rice in, in Paraguay. <laughs> I and guess you're like, all right, all right. You want lamb Paraguay or beef Paraguay? <laughs> I, I guess there's a bit to it that kind of makes it sound like a papaya or yeah, guava yeah, or like yeah. a combination of the two. P- Paraguava. Yeah, yeah. Paraguava. There we go. <laughs> uh, next up, Kareem Abdul Jabbar became <gasps> the very first NBA player to score 38,000 points in his career God or damn. in a career. 
Of course, yeah. his career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He, Kareem Abdul Jabbar <laughs> became the first Kareem Abdul Jabbar <laughs> to, to score, score 38,000 <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar points. <laughs> I, this is just life points. I have a Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> like Yu-Gi-Oh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh. Real quick, I was I went to the movie theater and he happened to be there. Oh. And wow. people, were, people were really cool. Like no one went up and were asking for pictures or, or autographs yeah, yeah, or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I went to the urinal and and then and then I felt like a like a giant presence next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar was using the urinal next to me, and I'm like, as it is, I don't like when people like. There's a lot of fucking room. Skip one. <laughs> oh, you know? okay. Oh, like, so, so he went to the one next to you despite yeah. there being extras. Yeah. Okay. There's so many extras. Right. And he right. and then like he just towered over me. I wish somebody had taken a picture from behind. <laughs> like it, it, the the privacy curtain thing did nothing. He just well, towered that's over his thing. it. <laughs> he's at a height where if he's at a urinal next to someone, he could he pee on just, my face. But he could also like take a little glance and see everyone's dick. You know? Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. at that height. Yeah. So he and he, so maybe, and he most assuredly does. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he was like, oh, I'm gonna see how I'm gonna compare. Well, oh, he's okay. so tall that everything <laughs> looks blurry because that's how tight he is. It's mist. Yeah. It, 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 there's a layer of mist in between <laughs> his height. <laughs> <laughs> the bar- barometric pressure is different where he if he went to silent in. hill he could still yeah. navigate well because his head pokes above the mist. <laughs> we are we are very elaborately just working our way up to how's the weather up there <laughs> yeah these are all just really lame derivations of that <laughs> uh, oh, uh, okay last bit of uh, history that i have for you on the day of airing or at least what i thought was a day of airing on february 8th of 1980 Mm-hmm. Uh, five whole five whole centimeters of snow fell in the outskirts of Los Angeles, and that was what? enough to make the news. I mean, that is newsworthy. Snow in Los Angeles is just that rare, guys. It is super rare. And whenever we get snow in Southern California, we freak the fuck out because it's so cool and rare. But also, if you because- live in Wisconsin, you can't relate. <laughs> but it's also because like the infrastructure in California just is not prepared for it. So oh, yeah, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> everyone's crashed and dead. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's like, stay indoors today. No, one- okay. I, 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 not me personally, but I've heard of coworkers from other coworkers that like. They skipped coming into work today because it's raining. Because <laughs> for context, I live in California. We all do. And like people in LA are just so like used to it not raining that when it does rain, they're like, I can't drive here. <laughs> Or they foolishly think they can drive exactly how they usually do and then they <laughs> get into trouble. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Boy, I'm glad I don't really commute anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> all right. uh-huh. Anyway, that's the end of that. Oh, it's the end of all the news. Thank you for taking us around the sun, Dan. Well, you're welcome. I guess I should probably mention here that today's episode is our first sponsored episode. <gasps> Holy shit. <gasps> Unfortunately, Boring. it's not ease. Okay. I legitimately looked into Ease. What as is a sponsor. even the point, Marvin? Yeah. <laughs> I legitimately looked into Seriously, it. Seriously, fuck whoever we're about to mention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really mean that. I really care uh, about you, sponsor in question. <laughs> yeah, I legitimately looked into Ease, and the problem is that they're 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 all localized. It's a California company only, so uh, it doesn't. They don't really want like podcast (laughs) sponsorships you know so but anyway our sponsor this week is actually a sponsor i actually personally use all the time and i think in general i I personally use ease all the time (laughs) (laughs) i mean we're going after what we can i guess yeah 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 Yeah, and i and i I use the sponsor all the time and i think they're the general idea of the sponsor is actually really good idea which is express vpn so i also use a sponsor yes i and i legitimately this is listen I personally have used ExpressVPN for like two years, and that's after I had hunted for like three other VPNs before that, didn't like them, then settled on Express because it checked all my check marks. It's like, yeah, the, the first thing I think is really important for any VPN is the security. It's yeah. like I legitimately want to make sure that they're like every VPN claims we don't do any logs, no connection logs, et cetera. We all run on RAM servers, et cetera, right? 
the cool thing I liked about ExpressVPN is that one time the Turkish government actually raided one of their servers because they needed to see if like this thing happened that they were doing through the ExpressVPN servers. And there was legitimately nothing there. And then also uh, ExpressVPN has been subpoenaed tons of times by the US government, have nothing to give. So in terms of security, actually true. And on top of that, it's actually fast. Like uh, a lot of other uh, VPNs I'd use, they're, you know, I, they work fine for what they do, but I still want, you know, I have a pretty big download and I would prefer to be able to use that. Uh, ExpressVPN lets you keep using that because their, their, their stream's actually pretty good. Hmm. And also mm-hmm. it works with Netflix. Like you can actually skip around to different regions in Netflix and not every street, like not every VPN actually lets you do that. Like mm. the, the like Netflix can and actually just catches a, the other VPNs. And just a quick bit of background, VPN services in general have often been utilized as a way for users in certain regions to Down temporarily seem oh, sorry. as though they're from <laughs> other regions <laughs> in order to perhaps, you know, tap into certain ranges of content that may not be particularly available in their own native region. Yeah. Yeah. So like th- this legitimately happened to the three of us because we were trying to watch Super Mario Brothers, the movie. <laughs> Yeah. For a commentary track for uh, our other podcast, the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast. And uh, it turns out the only place that was streaming it was Netflix Germany. You'd think it'd be Italy. Netflix <laughs> Italy. Uh, Why not, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was only Netflix Germany for whatever reason. And you just you'd switched think over. Italy would be proud of their heritage. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> their disgusting fungus ridden heritage. <laughs> But, 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 you know, they're (laughs) Reebok ridden heritage. (laughs) They're non jumping hair. I'm still kind of peeved. There's so little jumping in that movie. But anyway, uh, you transferred over to the Germany server. It actually works. I've done other VPNs where I've tried that. Netflix and streaming services like that actually keep a blacklist of VPN IPs. But uh, ExpressVPN keeps rotating it so fast that they can't keep up. And, uh, we actually have a special offer for newbie Star Trek listeners. If you go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek, you will get an extra three months if you get a 12 month subscription, which means the whole thing is 49% off, which is a pretty damn good deal. When I got ExpressVPN, I didn't get that deal. It was still fine, but I kind of would have liked that, but eh, it's too late. But if you don't have ExpressVPN right now, you can sign up for the 12 months. Just go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. And then if you choose the 12 month option, you're going to get 49% off. It's a pretty good deal. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for ExpressVPN. All right. Why, well, thank go, you, ExpressVPN. Yeah. 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 You don't want, you don't want the, your internet service provider knowing what kind of porn you're watching. All right. I mean, that's also, okay. That's actually the main reason I initially got a VPN is because a fucking what's it called? Um, net neutrality is dead in America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Ajit Pai killed it. Uh, <laughs> I've literally, mm-hmm. I've legitimately had times where I am, I, cause I watch a lot of YouTube. So I will be watching a YouTube video and it starts being chugging and not playing. I switch to the VPN. It instantly starts playing again. And I am pretty sure that there is something in this chain that is like throttling YouTube. Because they're like, I'm sick of YouTube taking up so much bandwidth for your connection. But if it's a VPN, they don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know. They don't know what you're doing at all, if you know what I mean. <laughs> wink, wink. May well, you, buy, no, may you no, use no. a VPN <laughs> to buy some sweet, sweet uh, s- stuff from Ease. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I will, I, I will yeah. say, use a VPN, you know, informed. Like, I, this is just a general PSA now. If you use a VPN, use it with an informed mind. Because, like, it's not... Like you're completely invisible or anything. That's not how VPNs work. Nor do they conf- it, like. Have you seen the, the that blanket that makes Harry Potter invisible? That's what happens. To- <laughs> <laughs> Virtually, yeah. But still, the fucking groundskeeper can still find you by smelling you. You know, so you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Willie, the groundskeeper. <laughs> groundskeeper Willie. Yeah. Exactly. VPNs do not absolve you of legal liability. No, they yeah. do. Yeah. So, the, so, so I'm, we're just saying. It's a good idea in general to have a VPN because it gives you a lot of these options. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. And even if it's ExpressVPN or it's not, I just think VPNs in general, in this day and age, are kind of like 
really good to have. You know, the norm. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Net neutrality in America is dead. So the VPNs are really important, actually. I think net neutrality is dead in in in, uh, in uh, Star Trek because they have shitty fucking reception. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and anytime they talk to somebody, it's I shitty. mean, you know, you know who also is dead in Star Trek? Ricardo, oh. <laughs> could you please tell us what happened in this episode? <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, sick. You. you rolled right into that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick bastard, dude. You <laughs> fell for it, fool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you um, tell us what happened in a matter of honor, please? I can, and I will. You know what? I will. Um, I didn't see the episode, but... <laughs> Perfect. Just pull a memory bu- alpha and start reading. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of Klingons. Yeah. Uh, so, um, all right. So, in this episode, we have... A, it's a very Klingon-y uh, episode. Mm-hmm. Lots and of false teeth. I, yeah, a lot of false teeth. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to start off with this a little spoiler alert for the end. Oh. Uh, this was one of my favorite episodes that we've seen oh, so far. I can I can definitely see why, because it's it's, it's pretty solid as an idea, I yeah. think, honestly. But also, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Also, I think that the Romulans, like, react like i would react like look they're, 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 they're sorry god damn it dude already dude you we're just, starting like this dude. you just put yourself in the crosshairs of every klingon in a sick <laughs> radius ricardo I, I know yeah Worf would be like <laughs> yeah so so okay so they react like i would react i mean they're, they're a little they're a little dumb i get it but <laughs> their reactions are correct like they're like they're like it's, it's not like the Federation, like the stupid fucking people on the Enterprise where they're like, oh, this person seems like they're sick. Let's just fucking invite them in. Or like, just, There's something weird going on. Remember those three times those things have gone crazy? Uh, let's, let's, let's do it again. Where, How could a pandemic happen a third yeah, time? Yeah. That's crazy. They don't question anybody. Where the Klingons, <laughs> the are, Klingons are like, the Klingons are like, well, what the fuck is that? Well, fuck, fuck you. Let's what fight. <laughs> yeah, let's fight, dude. Let's, and, throw, let's throw space hands. Yeah. Let's, th- yeah. let's throw down. <laughs> and I like that. I like that they, they just jump to conclusions really fast. <laughs> that they're like, they're like they, they question everything and everything. Everybody's against them. And that's kind of interesting because guess what? They survived all these years that, for a reason because yeah. they, they don't question. They, they, they don't ask, well, maybe, uh, maybe we won't get sick. They're like, no, fuck you. You got to sick, you piece of shit. We're gonna um, kill you now before you spread the disease. You know, that's, yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah. Um, they're, they're kind of a paradox, Klingons, because they're they're very like very like you know alpha. We're all alphas essentially, right? Yeah, yeah. But then like who's sure. who's who's like building their ships? Who's like cooking their food? You know, yeah. <laughs> like, who yeah. does like the tasks that aren't about honor? What I like <laughs> is that Worf like kind of th- comes up with that line that. Uh, that Ricardo essentially just gave to us. It's like, well, this Klingon civilization has lasted, you know, this long. Like they're mm-hmm. clearly succeeding or getting by with their traditions and culture. Right, but right, right. In practice, every single time the Klingons are left to do whatever they want to do, th- they're pretty much suicidal. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna self destruct <laughs> at any moment. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're always about to die for honor, like at a yeah. at the drop of a hat. It's great. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. you. Well, let's fucking shoot each other. Uh, I like that about them. So in this episode, we start off the episode and. I don't know what Luke Picard's doing, but he's not on the bridge. He's probably looking at the Harp Ladies video. So <laughs> it's probably a big hit. He's probably Rick, using Rick, a VPN. Yeah. He's using a VPN to watch the Harp Ladies. <laughs> so, Riker slipped him the, the holodisc yeah. and was like, so well, I've been watching Also, this if you use the VPN back in command, they don't know what you're watching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're still liable. But they don't know what you're watching. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, so uh, Riker's like, "Hey, we got some new um, officers because there's an officer exchange program, kind of like a student exchange program." And and they're like, "All right, uh, Wesley, you're my you're my surrogate son. Let's go to the let's go to the transporter room and check out these new people." Mm-hmm. So they go over there. They head over there, and there's this dude who looks like Mordok. From the last season, right? Is in fact Wesley's he looks friend. so much like Mordock that he's played by the same actor. Yeah. It's oh, is he? It's literally the same actor. Yeah. And and so it, it, he he Wesley sees him and he's like, "Hey, what's up, Mordock? You you can't have graduated high school over the fuck." You. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no. Nah. Yeah. I love I love okay I love the idea of a Star Trek high school. <laughs> oh man, that's 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 a that's a show. That Star should exist. High. Oh yeah. my god! Why not? That sounds great. Yeah. Just turn just, just X Men like, evolutionize it. 
Oh no, fuck. no. It's gotta be like Beverly Hills 90210 where everybody's sleeping with everybody <laughs> and fucking Jason Priestley gets involved with drugs and <laughs> Dylan dies, but he didn't die. And it's, it's yeah. Oh man, that'd be sick. Yeah, I'd I down. I'd be down. They should watch just that. remake Beverly Hills 90210 as in the Star Trek universe. Same yeah. name, same characters, just with <laughs> space spaces. R- bring Matthew Perry back. Yeah. <laughs> same, but then just same. put some ridges on his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same scripts too. They don't change a thing. The peach pit. The peach pit is that bar, that shitty bar on the fucking Enterprise. Uh, ten forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's, oh. Um, it's 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 just a setting change, it's like yeah, a superficial yeah. setting change. Yeah. Else. Yeah. <laughs> so so this oh, dude, so he's like, "Hey, Mordock, what's up, dog?" And he's like, "Dude, I'm not Mordock, dude. I'm I'm, I'm Mega Memnon or whatever the fuck is that." Mega Memnon. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm from Benzar, dude, uh, and I'm one of those aliens that smoke weed out of these these things, yeah. Um, because they have those like vape things that are always going. That's why they're always high, yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. It's yeah. like it's, it's like they all have asthma, constant yeah. asthma, so they have yeah. to like breathe that, and so they so, have to play the harmonica constantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in Bob Dylan songs all the time. You're like, God damn, yeah. play another the thing, o- dude. The only thing that staves off my illness. Is playing Bob Dylan songs. <laughs> um, I have a joke yeah. about Bob Dylan. Uh, he's the original hipster, and if you if you kill him, if you put drive a, a wooden stake through his heart, all the hipsters die. <laughs> they turn back to normal people. Um, but anyway, so he's like, "Oh no, my name is Mega uh, Mega or whatever his name is, Me- Mega Don or whatever." And he's Megalodon. like. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, but but uh, but I'm from the same planet. We're the same race. We all look alike, so don't worry about it. Which right. is kind of racist, like like. Cause yeah, he, it's he, kind he, of odd because like this was an alien species that like because it's an alien species, they just allowed to say well, like, well, yeah, we do all look alike, but we know how to tell each other apart. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, right. we we just do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like it's, Asians. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to Wesley's credit, though, he is literally the exact same person. Yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's allowed yeah. to make that point, I guess. Yeah. I guess if he came like, then he was like, you know, uh, like a, like a black version of Mordok, then you'd be like, oh, Mordok, you know, then that would be weird. But yeah. since it's literally yeah. the same actor, yeah. <laughs> it's probably just their way of lampshading it. I feel like they probably brought him back because they wanted to bring in whatever these, were they Benzites? Benzites? Benzites, yeah. Yeah. Back and they're like, God, we already have one of these headpieces. We we really don't need to make another yeah, one yeah. for a different actor's head. Just paint it differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a very paint. it's a very like a uh, head wrapping piece. Like yeah, yeah it's, it's elaborate. It looks, it's very form fitting. So it's, it was probably a huge pain in the ass to make in the first place. Yeah. So they're, they're probably like, we're not gonna make it. For we're gonna do it again. We're not gonna do it again. <laughs> Just um, bring it back. <laughs> so and then and then Lupin Card's like, hey, meet me in in the fucking red in the. What is it called? The danger room. And they're <laughs> fucking shooting lasers at things. And it's essentially, lame, yeah. yeah it's essentially, it's essentially the laser, the danger, laser room, danger. <laughs> well, room. it's the laser room. Then <laughs> it's it lame. Looks like they're the playing worst scene from Galaga Tron. or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very Tron ish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would have rather them hurling identity discs. <laughs> And I, 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 okay, I always thought that was funny in Tron. We're like, this is your identity disc. It protected. holds all of your information and data protected with your life, and also it's your only weapon. Throw yeah, it, it at people. It is your, it is your only projectile weapon. <laughs> God, <damn>. uh, <laughs> uh, so it's, it's like if you're traveling and like your passport is like your your weapon. You yeah, know? <laughs> your social security card. <laughs> Um, so, so they're, they're playing some, some fucking laser tag or something. Yeah. And, and so he, Picard's like, Hey dude. Um, so y- y- what's up with these new people? And he's like, Oh, they're, they're, they're okay. Um, and so basically they're talking about the, the officer exchange program and Picard's like, well, you know, like we're actually going to try to ha- get somebody to volunteer to go over to the, uh, to the, um, not the Klingon, Romulus. the Klingon, yeah, the, Kl- the Klingon ship, and and then old fucking Riker's like, oh, I'll volunteer, I'm down, mm. and he's like, really, and basically, and I, and I like that he did that, I did that, like he's really like into the spirit of what this whole show is about, which is about exploration. He's, yeah, yeah, he's right. like deep mm-hmm. into it. He's like, fuck it, dude, let's do it, dude, I'll fucking do it, and he goes like all in. Like, and I like that about this episode. I'm I mean, like, he, this he, is about Riker. He, yeah. He even like almost brings up the idea of, 
transferring in the first, like he brings up and accepts the idea at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. because he really mm-hmm. wants to try it out, which is yeah. a very interesting point of view of his character. Because like, I, I, th- I think he wants to, he does stuff like this because he wants to be like a, like climb the ladder really fast sort of thing, you know? Because because oh, like sure. R- R- Riker's ambition is to be captain, so you know like he's always willing to go with the away team, even though yeah. he's first officer. Like he doesn't yeah. really need to do that, but sure, you know. He so I feel like he did. Well, also he's like uh, maybe I could fuck somebody in this planet. Yes, um, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's his first a priority. He almost um, he almost got the chance this episode. I know too. So <laughs> anyway, he he basically is like, oh, I'm, I volunteer. I want to know what's up with these Klingon. Mm, yeah, Klingons. <laughs> and so the so uh the episode starts now there's the credits roll and he's talking to wharf talking about like like basically their customs and their way of like their power ranking is like hey like basically you find out really quick and as the episode goes that they don't have any old people because like anytime somebody is like not up to the, the task of doing their job they just fucking kill them yeah literally they're like oh you're dead dude you're weak and so so he's he's so like Riker's like trying to understand this like and and he's like he's like no it would be it would be like honor for you it would be an honor honors what it would be it would be like honorable. honor honorable sorry god damn it just <laughs> so not smoke as much before the episode. um and he's like it would be honorable if if the if the if the cap captain of the ship couldn't do his job it would be the honorable thing for you to kill him and then take their job like that'd yeah. be the proper way. Yes. And, and he basically says like, they've survived, you know, all these years by having this code. And then, um, we go back to fucking Megan Memnon and he's, he's <laughs> getting high again. He's on the bridge and they give these guys access really fast. I don't like that. Like the Klingons will never do this. They'd be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Doing? It's first a you little fight weird. Us. Yeah. First you fight us and then we'll put, we'll give you a fucking job. P- Picard's way too willing to let a bunch of ensigns onto the bridge, you know, yeah. like, Put them down in engineering or something. Yeah. Like, don't you want to touch? What do you want to touch? You want to touch this console? Fucking come over here. Like dude. episode one, <laughs> yeah. episode one, Picard would have never allowed this. Yeah, yeah, episode one, Picard would have been like, okay, Riker, go over to the the Klingon ship, but you have to take a shuttle yourself, and you have to be naked. You yeah. know, you yeah. would tell him some bullshit like that, yeah. and burn <laughs> burn all the body on your hair. Uh, <laughs> all the body burn all the hair in your body <laughs> um, and so M- Mega Memnon <laughs> Mega Memnon uh, he's, he's basically nosy as shit dude he's nosy as shit he's always looking at people's business and he's like he's yeah. always like well there's a better way to do this so okay, sure. it's like shut up dude he's you, that guy should, at work yeah, yeah they should give yeah. this guy to the fucking Klingons and they beat the shit out of him dude uh, and then <laughs> he's he that new guy at work who comes in and goes like oh I, I already know your workflow. I'm going to fix it. And you're like, no, no, we already, we have a reason for this workflow. If you change yeah. it, you'll break everything. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, nah, nah, just, just me. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's the same guy who, who's like, dude, this is, you, you explain the problems you, you have. You're like, this is, this is what's wrong with this place, dude. You break it down. <laughs> like the first day you're like, yeah, no need to sugarcoat it. This is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. And he's like, oh, I'll fix it. And you're like, I want to laugh in your face because that's the most stupid thing I've ever heard <laughs> that you're going to fix it. You know how many people before you have come and tr- try to fix things? No, exactly. they, 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 they yeah. just leave because they're so frustrated, dude. So shut the fuck up, <laughs> sit down and wait till noon to go to your fucking lunch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 10 uh, forward serve some good lunch. <laughs> yeah. And so, so he's going around like saying like, oh, this is, you, you know, like you, you can improve it by doing this, this and that. And then he gets to Wesley's thing and he's like oh it's a perv uh, designating you're 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 first rate man and everyone loves wesley because he's such a fucking kiss ass dude (laughs) he basically is like well why do you think this is first rate and he's like oh it's very specific and it's like simple but efficient and like they're already increasingly backhanded (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, it's a lot of yeah definitely tons of backhanded comments and like just like huh I could do this. Like, yeah. 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 One and then, um, th- one of my favorite scenes that it's funny. Cause you didn't need, uh, the, the new doctor. I forget her name. Pulaski. Um, Pulaski. Plans- Plansky. Yeah. yeah right. um, oh, damn it. <laughs> and so, so she goes, she, I don't know. I guess she's going to go talk to him about something. I forget what they're going to talk about, but, but she finds him in the, uh, 1040 or what is it called? 10 the, forward. Yeah. 10 forward. Yeah. Yeah. And he's eating a bunch, but, 
he's not eating this this Klingon food the way that people trying new food eat, which is like, oh, um, it looks gross, but I'm gonna try it. Like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's he's of Anthony Bourdain of fucking, <laughs> and, you know. He's like, oh, yeah. fuck yeah, dude, this tastes like shit, but fuck, it's your culture. <laughs> fuck yeah, I'm gonna eat yeah, this. Yeah, so yeah, delicious. Like, mm-hmm. I want to eat it the way you're eating it. What yeah, do I? Yeah. How do I, I eat, eat it? it? How yeah, do I yeah. growl? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, and he's full on Anthony Bourdain, and he's he's got a smile on his face, and he's like eating a bunch of disgusting shit. Yeah. And, I, and uh, I think he's actually legitimately saying like, oh, some of this is tasty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he's like, this is gah. Uh, <laughs> and he's, he's eating a bunch of shit and he's, he, he, he's more shit's coming, getting delivered to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all these elixirs and, and worms and stuff. And he's just fucking into it, dude. And so he's, he's into it. He's talking to her. And then it's funny because the captain shows up and he, he wants to share something like a drink. And, and the captain's like, no, no, I'm like, oh, shit, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll fall asleep and not wake up for like two months. This is so strong. <laughs> um, is this the wait. first time we've ever seen Ten Four like wait staff? Yeah, I yeah, think so. Right? I, yeah, I think yeah. I think it was the first time we've seen it as like a restaurant. Yeah, where like, you, like a server came around with new things that were presum were like presumably ordered. Yeah, which is a little. I, I guess that confirms that they don't just go up to a replicator on a wall or something. Yeah, no, they just have a server go up to a replicator. Yeah, on, yeah, on their wall. Because <laughs> yeah. there's no way they just have a bunch of Klingon food in their kitchen. I, yeah, I exactly, really, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I really doubt that. It's funny because some of this food looks delicious in the way like it crunches. Like I'm like, oh, that looks like a, it looks like deep fried pickles. Some of it's and, just like, octopus. Yeah. And I'm yeah, just, I'm just yeah. like, I eat octopus. <laughs> uh, appara- just- apparently the, the prop guys, they raided the local Asian markets for crap. So this was <laughs> on this <laughs> table. Yeah. That's what, what, that's what the production what, notes say. What is the most racist food we can think of? Uh, <laughs> What's well, exotic, but yeah. still technically edible. Uh, <laughs> Asian food. Yeah. Let's put some jajangmyeon um, and shit in there. <laughs> I, I I ate some octopus this weekend. It's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so I had a to Cape Cod. To- I had some octopus there as well. Yeah. Tostada. Yeah. Want to um, talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. and so he's eating the shit out of that food, and more shit gets delivered, and he's just crunching on it. And then so he's walking around um, after his meal, and he sees Worf, and Worf's like, oh. Um, here's an emergency transponder just in case, like in, sh- in case like shit goes down and you know, you could just click it and tick it and <laughs> click it or tick it. <laughs> and, and so basically he's like, oh, okay, okay. I, I get it. And, uh, Riker's like, oh, are you getting like sentimental? You know, like, are you going to miss me? And he's like, no, it's just a security measure. Like it's nothing. Uh, it's just efficiency. Uh, also, I, I, like your Klingons are gonna be fucking crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. And also, I I'm sure Worf's like, I don't want to, I don't want a new first officer. I get along with you. I don't want to deal with fucking. Yeah, I don't want a new coworker. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a great coworker. Yeah, I or he's gonna what, really. try, try to come and change things. Fuck that, dude. Yeah, fuck um, that. Yeah. So anyway, um, the the Riker's on his way to get transported over to to the Klingons. Mm-hmm. And and he's like, <laughs> Picard comes on, and, and again a shitty fucking FaceTime signal, and <laughs> and he's like, hey, so uh, I'm sending you like my my my, it, you're getting a fine officer, the best, and yes. he's like, I'll be the judge of that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they're real dicks, uh, but I like them, and yeah, it's I, Chumley again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is Captain Chumley of, of the Pa. <laughs> um, uh. So, so he's he gets sent. He, he's about to get sent out, and 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 uh, he the Romulus or what's his name the the fish guy. Oh, Megamemnon. Sure, yeah, sure, Megamemnon. Rom- Romulus. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Megamemnon. Uh, he, he, oh, he's like, he's like, oh, oh. Basically, he, he tells Worf like, oh, they're like. He basically makes it like a kind of like it's offensive what he basically tells him, but but he yeah. says, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, and he's like, I'm not offended yet. Yeah. Um, and so he tells him like, just shut up and fucking do your job, dude. You piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I do and- like the way Worf is dealing with this guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It is like he is being gracious. <laughs> yes, insofar as he can be as a Klingon. Yeah. Yes, but and, but but like but he's taking the perfect approach towards this type of employee. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> on the yeah. ship where you're just like just shut the fuck up dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 look away dude look away go, <laughs> look, look in your screen dude but i'm thinking too i don't care just pr- pr- hit buttons dude um and and so uh mega memnon he's like hey uh he goes to the station and he starts like fucking punching at things punching numbers and he and he realizes that like there's like a weird anomaly on mm-hmm. the side of the uh klingon ship and he's like he's like pointing like he's pointing like, like lasers uh where the thing is because he's mm-hmm. like what is this and it, it, there's like a weird substance or inconsistency a bacterial thing on the on the ship on the Something outside of the is ship. coming back is inconclusive yes yeah which is the worst thing yeah you don't want any oh, test to come back in oh man yeah you go to the doctor and your yeah. test comes inconclusive. That's the worst feeling. It is. <laughs> I once I went mean, to urgent care because I because I had a cough that wouldn't go away, and and something came back inconclusive. And they're like, you should just go to the doc- the hospital right now. And then oh, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. well, I came, I walked in, like, and they're like, no, you could have a heart attack at any moment. And I'm oh like, my God. Oh, and I'm no. like, really? He's like, don't even go. Yeah, I legitimately also went to an urgent care because I was having a breathing issue, and they're like, oh, this is in- these are all inconclusive tests. Go to <laughs> ER right away. <laughs> And then the ER uh, wouldn't see me for eight hours oh, boy. <laughs> while I was having the breathing issue. Oh, good. And Fantastic. then <laughs> they saw me and said, you're fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and that's um, why you're alive today. Thanks, yeah. healthcare staff. Thanks, yeah. American yeah. healthcare system. Um, <laughs> So what time so, is it? We need to applaud right now. <laughs> <laughs> so so they they send off um uh Riker onto the uh Klingon ship and he takes off. Mm-hmm. And then uh old Mega Memnon's like stops the captain. He's like, Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Like, can they first of all I'm I'm honored to be here on the Enterprise and stuff? And he's like, All right, cool. All right, you could have not talk to me because I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> don't, don't talk to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and he basically says, "Hey, I, could I could I talk to you for a few minutes to talk about some procedural changes that that could happen? Can I show you cool. my spec script? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's a kind of yeah. what's going on. It's like <laughs> you just it's your first day at the studio. You walk yeah. by Steven Spielberg. It's like, oh, I'm a huge fan. By the way, here's my spec script. And and Steven Spielberg <laughs> goes, "You're a page." You should go back to <laughs> yeah. go back go, go back to your station, uh, and 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 Worf like fucking side eyes him like he wants to fucking punch him, dude. He's like, if I if we were in, in on, on my ship, uh, I would beat the shit out of you, and then I would eat you. Um, that's what he was thinking, and so he's, mm-hmm. he basically tells him like, shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up, uh, and then, <laughs> and then he kind of just. Does his own thing, um, right. and then and then uh, back uh, we follow Riker now, and I had uh, I had a lot of questions about this ship, and I, I, one of the big things was like, why is it so dark in there? It's and then and then I remember you wait, wait wait wait, and then you <laughs> told me, but well, yeah, of course it's for aesthetics, but <laughs> then you remember you telling me that the Klingons have the best cloaking device, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, they they are so, notorious for having like. Like, like a Klingon bird of prey's main tool is that it can cloak and the yeah. cloak is very good. It's like yeah. difficult to spot, which well, is interesting because Klingons are known for like fighting honorably. So the right. act of cloaking in, in space battle seems like a very cowardly thing to do. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I guess they're fine with that part of it. I don't know. They're like, we're okay. Um, but, but it makes sense that, that there would be very little light. And mm. cause it's, it's like, not only is it literally giving off less like UV rays, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. Like th- you, you, it's not perceptible. There's no heat signature. There's less, yeah, less yeah, heat yeah. signature, but also the ship probably produces less energy and they could divert the energy to the cloaking technology. It makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense actually. I, 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 to me, it's akin to like, uh, I always thought of Klingon bird of prey almost like submarine crews. Cause they're like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of you know, dark. Yeah. It's dark it's and dingy. Damp. It's a smaller ship, but it's a, like a smaller theme. crew. It's a smaller yeah. ship with a smaller crew, but they kind of do like stealth attacks, you yeah. know, you know, Sean so the- Connery always has a Russian accent. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. that's why I, and then like, you know, like the enterprise is like a battle cruiser. Yeah. And like, is like a, and Klingons are like German U-boats, which it goes straight back to the, cause you know, Roddenberry was this, was a, in the Navy. So yeah. I, th- I think that's just how he equates all of this anyway. So. Yeah. 
And then and then uh, Riker meets the second officer, Shao Kahn. And um, <laughs> it's literally Shao Kahn. Yeah. yeah. It's and, him. And, and, and he, <laughs> it's not literally Shao Kahn. <laughs> and, and, he, and he, it's the same actor. It's actor. Brian it's, Thompson. <laughs> yeah, it's Brian Thompson. Uh, wait, what? He's the, Mortal Kombat the Annihilation Shao Kahn. Brian yeah. Thompson was Clegg. Yeah. Wait, wait. Marvin. <laughs> Come on, dude. I really? thought you were the researcher yeah. here. Oh my god! <laughs> I, heard mean, the, I heard the voice, and I was like, "Oh, there's Buffalo Bob." Slash yeah, you mean I his did, jutty lips didn't I, throw? I, I thought he just meant he looked oh. like him, which he does, but it turns out it's actually no. It's it's fucking him, dude. Yeah. Oh my god, it's him. Um, so he's he t- in it. <laughs> he, oh man, that's he, good. He's oh, like basically like, oh, I've never met any any one of your kind. Like you're the first human I've met. I'm um, Buffalo Bob, also known <laughs> as second officer, also known as Shao. And he's so much better in this episode of television yeah, than he yeah. was in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His, 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 his the scenes he has, they're you know, great. Where he, he talks, they're yeah, good. where he talk about his backstory yeah. and shit. It's like he can yeah. act. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what? an actor. <laughs> he has he has emotions he can deliver. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe Brian Thompson had emotion. It's almost like Annihilation had a bad direction. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, so he takes him to um, he takes him to the captain, and it, the captain does some crazy things. Like he basically tells him, like he basically wants his loyalty. Like he wants to see how loyal he is. And basically, what it, what it boils down to is a little back and forth, right? But basically, uh, he's like, I want your like full like loyalty. Uh, he's like f- fucking Donald Trump, dude. And <laughs> he's like, I want you to just do whatever I say, even if it goes against the fucking government. Um, <laughs> I may ask you to storm the Capitol. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's, no. And he's, like, oh, and, he's no. Like, and he's like, he's like, no, I can't do that. Like, he's like, I swore an oath and I can't. And he's like, well, you, will you, you fucking betray us, dude. And he's like, no. He's like, look. Basically, I before this, I swore an oath to the Federation, right? So right. I can't go against them, but my loyalties die with you. So I would die with you in battle. I would die with you in battle, and I am loyal to you here. Wait, did did that breakdown happen like on their first encounter? Or was that maybe a later not? Thing? But may, maybe it's a no. It was it was it was the first thing I think. No, I thought that was like one of the the last like confrontations they had where they started shouting at each other. No, no. Well, well, they they do have the when they initially talk, he's like he you does know, like make him like you know pledge loyalty. It's like, what are you gonna like? Are you gonna like? Are you gonna work for me or not? And Rick right, like, yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. I'm here. Like, I'm here to do my job. Right, right. I'm the first officer. Damn it! And I know what that means. Yeah, it's interesting that he still holds his his rank. Yeah, that, that he brought he had on the Enterprise, and he brings well, it over. Well, it's well, he, it is his section because he he says, "I want you to." Uh, he's he's like, "Oh, I'll I'll basically I'm um, I'm I'm your first officer. I will die with the ship." And and basically says, "Will you swear an oath to it?" And he says, "I I just did. I just did." Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What yeah. Are you talking about? And then yeah, that's yeah. when that's when Shao Kahn's like, oh, and he's like, <laughs> "I don't believe him." And uh, and uh, what if he said something really horrible on Klingon? Uh, <laughs> And he's like, Probably did. Sha- Shao Kahn's like, I don't believe him. And and he's like, speak their language, you fucking fool. Yeah, uh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, he's, he's like being surprising. Like, yeah, like you're being very rude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird, actually, yeah. which and is actually that doesn't make sense because everyone it, it canonically everyone in Star Trek has universal translators on their person at all times, constantly translating. So even if he did say it in Klingon, Riker should have immediately heard what it should have been. Yeah. Well, like those translated? are the subtitles at the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. He, he's reading subtitles. <laughs> That's what yeah. Universal translators actually do. Yeah. It shows <laughs> up in real time in yeah, front yeah. of you. Yeah. Shows well, in your eyes like a Google um, Glass. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically, he he tells him to speak English. He's like, speak English. We're in America, dude. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, he's like, uh, he's, like uh, he's like Riker. This is your second second officer here and so he's like he's like he's like uh, Riker's like what what did you want to tell me you fuck and he's like i don't believe you you piece of shit and he's like really really you you're challenging my authority you piece of shit and then shot like yeah that's correct 
And then, and then he's like, he's like, oh, oh, this is interesting. And then he just fucking beats the shit out of him, dude. Yeah, he annihilates him. Yeah. Like he can take out this super strong Klingon warrior, but yeah. this old man with adrenaline from conspiracy. Well, he, yeah, dude, dude, this old, but this old man though, he had not only did he have was he juicing, dude, but he also took mm-hmm. a bunch of Viagra, so he had like so much fucking power, dude. He was he hard everywhere. Yeah, he was hard everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> you can't fight that, dude. His fists were all full of blood, dude. Uh, and then, and so he beats the shit out of Shao Kahn, and and the captain's like, "Oh, I love this." Uh, he's so excited, dude, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, you're." you're you're good. You're great. Um, I think here was where they tried. Where I think there was an attempt in the script to establish a precedent for what Riker pulls off later on, where he like there's that low growl before like inciting a confrontation, like a physical oh, yeah, confrontation. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah. About. Where yeah. it's like the low growl is your cue to like have the other guy throw the first punch, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. And so we go back to the to the Enterprise, and uh, the, they basically find. In the scans they they did, they find that that they find the little bacteria on the ship, basically. Mm-hmm. And the f- fucking fish man, uh, Mega Memnon, he's like, "Oh, I found it. Yeah, I found it. It was in the dorsal thing on the uh, on the engineering section of the plane." And then the captain's like, "Why the fuck didn't you tell us, you piece of shit?" <laughs> and he he's like, "Oh, because like in my planet, like we just we we figure out the problem is and then we solve it and then we bring it to you." with the basically like the way to solve it. And he's like, no, you have dunes. You should have told us earlier. Cause you know, what is this? And they figure out that it's like this corrosive bacteria. That's going to basically put a hole in the fucking ship. Yeah. Um, and they're like, Oh fuck. Like where, I wonder where they got it and stuff. And so anyway, they get pissed at this mega Memnon guy. And he's like, dude, you gotta, you gotta follow our procedures. You fucking dipshit. Don't forget about what you know, dude. Pay attention, dude. You idiot. That's why you're wearing a blue shirt, dude. None, not like our colors. <laughs> um, and so he gets pissed at him, but he's like, he's like, just quickly, let's figure this out. We got to f- fucking track down the ship now and and help them, you know. Um, and automatically, I'm like, oh, that's what the transporter thing, the tracking beam is going to fucking come into play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so <clears throat> then we go back to the to the what is this what is this ship called? The Pach. The Pach. Uh, yeah. The, they have great words, dude. I love yeah. Klingon. It's good. <laughs> I love like, eating gach on the pach. Yeah. <laughs> 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 throws, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so they're eating and everyone's fucking into it, dude. Everyone's fucking yeah. scarfing shit down. Worms and fucking deep fried pickles and shit like that. And <laughs> fucking well, frog deep fried legs. Pickles are, deep fried pickles are delicious. I love they that. are actually. I'm actually craving that right now um <laughs> so so um he's there and he's like he's like they're kind of trying to like haze him a little bit Riker they're yeah yeah he's Riker yeah, yeah and yeah. they're like well do you not like our food and he's like no it's good it's just and to me I'm like well he just ate a bunch of food back in the Enterprise like they don't know that but like he, yeah, literally, he legitimately isn't hungry yeah because yeah, he literally ate, he ate like a, a bunch feast of, before yeah. coming on board yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like oh I'm just not hungry and, and then and then um and then Shao Kahn's like, well, why don't you try some of these? And then he, he doesn't shy away from anything. Like he right, kind right. of is like, yeah, sure. I, I, yeah. And he, and he even says like, oh, I've had that, but not live. And he's like, oh, they just best live, these worms. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the ladies are fucking, all the lady Klingons are fucking eyeballing him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's there's some funny stuff that happens in this section. Yeah, which yeah. This is, is a great scene. Yeah. <laughs> basically, the first the first funny moment is when they're like, hey, maybe uh, Shao Kahn's like, maybe your food's too strong for you, dude. Maybe one of these ladies can give you some breast milk. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then they laugh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they hold their bellies and laugh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then one of the girl, one of the lady Klingons is like, "Do you like her pie?" And he's like, "Oh, I love it. It's delicious, dude." And he's like, "I, you know, I." He's like, "This, this," and he starts naming things like, "Oh, this claw is excellent." I'm like, it's like it, it, it's very much like fucking Anthony Bourdain. He's like, "Oh, I've had this before, but not authentic like this." Basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, this." This uh, brigit lung is is is. I'm enjoying this thing, and he's really into it, dude. And then another funny moment is basically th- that they say like, "Oh, the the ladies want to try you out to see if you can you can endure." 
and <laughs> yeah, the, two yeah, different yeah. ladies have been looking at him and he makes a good joke which is like he's like both of them <laughs> 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 all the clans are like, oh, this yeah. guy. Including uh, the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> and the and Klingon, then, one of the ladies are like, I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah. One of the ladies is like, she's like, I might come back for you in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and then Riker does that like, a panicked drink from the glass that Jesse yeah. Pinkerman does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and they all laugh and then uh, like everybody leaves except uh, two Klingons and, and Riker. And Shao Kahn even is like, they have a bonding moment because they're like, oh, dude, I didn't know you had fucking sense of humor. And then that's, and Riker says that back. Like, he's like, dude, I didn't know you fuckers had a sense of humor. You guys are funny as shit, dude. Dark sense of, sense of humor, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah, the Klingon we got on my ship is a big jerk yeah, yeah dude he it, doesn't it's make where, any it's, jokes yeah it's where you start getting you got a sense of it in the first uh klingon episode where the two the like three rogue klingons showed up yeah, yeah and yeah. hung on an enterprise but yeah. we, we're getting more and more evidence that Worf is like the black sheep of the klingon like he st- he he doesn't really fit in yeah, it's he's right. like he's like the guy who lived his whole culture not knowing he's that culture and then he has to like learn it backwards yeah. You know, so that so he takes it really too seriously when in fact Klingons are basically like a bunch of barbarians. So they're kind of just like doing whatever, having fun. Like honor is cool, but <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You know. And and so you find out <clears throat> a lot about the uh, Shao Kahn because they ba- they're basically telling stories with their family and stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. one of the dudes says like, "Oh, my mom's still alive, um, but my dad died in one of the he was killed in battle." Mm-hmm. And then Riker asks. Uh, Shao Kahn, like, hey, what's up with your father, dude? <laughs> Which is a horrible thing to say, if, like, because when you just met somebody, like, because it's like, <laughs> yeah. what if their dad left them? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's yeah. it's kind of like a weird thing. Like, you had to judge. You had to like. You kind of wait for them to bring it up versus yeah, you. Yeah. You being like, who? What about your parents? Yeah, are they <laughs> yeah. dead? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and basically, he was he. Uh, Shao Kahn's like, well, my dad was captured uh, by the Romulans during battle and was not allowed to die. You know, so he eventually escaped, and you know, he's. And and Riker's like, well, where is he now? And he's like, oh, he's he's on our planet, but you know, he's kind of like, he, like, he, it's basically like he's like he's retired and he's getting yeah. really mad. Yeah, yeah, he's on he's social like, security. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of like if you don't die with honor, like it's kind of dishonorable, basically. Like yes, you didn't, exactly. You never yeah. got if you to don't die in glorious and, battle. You're yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's not even his fault. He was captured. No. Yeah, and, and not allowed. allowed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so it's a very interesting thing. You learn more about the, the Klingons that way. And also like you learn more, uh, more about how they can't really express emotion. Like their, their, their only emotions like anger, which is why I like them, dude. Uh, <laughs> they just go from zero to 10, dude. Nothing in between just fucking happy or been laughing or fucking angry and fighting. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Those yeah. are the two, two modes. They don't really have yeah. anything else. Yeah. And then basically he says like, so what's up? What's up with your dad? Like what's going to happen to him? He's like, eh, he'll eventually fade with natural illness, but that's not an honorable way to go. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you, you can't fight a good battle when you're fighting cancer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, which is true. You know, you, it, it, it's horrible. Like he, he, these people thrive on dying honorably and dying of a natural disease. Yeah. They want blazes not, of glory. Yeah. They don't want slow, like burns, slow burns. Yeah. Slow burns. Yeah. 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 They would probably he would probably rather just blow himself up with a grenade. Yeah, <laughs> right now. Yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you you, you know to be it, fair, it, it's a really cool way to go. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost as good as my personal favorite, punching a bolt of lightning. <laughs> yeah. And 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 he Bare says uh, and he says yeah. and he says uh, Riker says why don't you guys like have any feelings? Why don't you rely yourselves? And he's like, well, we never learned you know to do that. And Riker's like, well, mm. I I never learned how to eat non or whatever he's eating he's like until today <laughs> and he eats non and <laughs> he's like this delicious fucking Indian bread um, uh, <laughs> that's that is a good point he makes I really like the way that scene ends where he's, yeah, he's yeah. it's like it's the two cultures they both just taught each other something yeah. and I think yeah. that's really cool 
it this is a good this is a better exploring klingons episode than the first one in yeah, the yeah first by, season. Far, by far yeah 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 this is way yeah. better it's way yeah. more interesting and so uh, the mega memnon he's trying to figure out how to fix the the bacteria how to get rid of it and fix it mm. and then uh back on the um klingon ship the captain calls for Riker and he's like, look at this. What does this do? What does this look to you? You fuck. And he's like, well, that looks like a, looks like a, like a hole. Like did something hit us? Uh, I didn't feel it. And he's like, no dude, it's a fucking hole. Like something's eating our ship, dude. And, and he's like, okay. Okay. And he's like, but the only people we've come in contact with, with is you guys. You mm. guys are the ones who fucking gave us this thing. You guys are trying to fucking kill us. Fuck you. And like yeah. it instantly escalates. And I like that because if it was the <laughs> Enterprise, I'd be like, hmm. Oh, this, probably th- this thing will probably eat our ship. It's fine. And then no, like, if, it was, if it was the Enterprise, Picard yeah. would call a conference meeting and everyone yeah. would go in the room and they'll be like, what is this? I want opinions. And everyone would tell them the opinion. Yeah, and they would just be like, "We just get rid of it with the laser." Like you know, Miles O'Brien would probably just come up with the solution. Everyone would be like, "Oh, okay, cool. Let's just do that and move on." And you have no episode. Record, it's like, <laughs> yeah. so I recommend we did we detach the saucer section. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of that whole part of the shit. And Logan's like, "Whatever you do, don't oh, let it, don't okay. let a black man take command." <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that piece of shit racist Logan. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but to be also. I mean, to, to Dan's point, I was just thinking the whole time, why not just cut a section around the bacteria and yeah. just pull that part of the hull off as problem solved? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't yeah. really, no one really tried. To no, do no. That. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, it's eating away at our ship when we can do nothing. It's like, I'm sure you could fucking just, just chop it off. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like, <laughs> like when you have gangrene on your body, you don't just go, oh, it's just going to go. <laughs> you know, like yeah, you shoot it off. You shoot it off. <laughs> um, so, anyway, the, the Klingon captain's like, well, we're going to turn back and we're going to go to the Enterprise. And then <laughs> they're like, okay, okay, that seems reasonable. We'll go back and figure out this out. He's like, and then we fucking kill them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, whoa, okay, okay. And, and this is where. <laughs> This is where we I don't start think to they get. bring up even once just how absurd an idea that is because Warbird, like they show in the, within the episode just how small a Warbird is compared. Yeah, to it the would Enterprise. get wrecked. Oh, it man. would get so wrecked. I mean, like they are, they do have a really big initial advantage because they are cloaked. But once sure. they uncloak, they are. Fu- it's the Enterprise. <laughs> like, like, they're not uh, gonna get very far. Well, like uh, by the time they get within, like uh, by the time they're starting to approach, I think they are starting to accept that they will die if they. Yeah, start. yeah, and I guess that's also part of the Klingon way is just they're like, yeah, we're which brings take a me back to my that. point. It's like, yeah. how can you just say that your civilization has lasted this long when <laughs> this is how you conduct yourselves? <laughs> There's a lot of Klingons. <laughs> okay, and they and they and they procreate very fast. And very yeah, often, yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> and and so so um, then you have a scene with uh, with Mega Memnon, and he's basically like <laughs> he kind of it, it, him and Wesley have a thing where like he basically like he's like, hey, I know you got yelled at, but you know, like you just just figure it out, like just it's do the this, only this scene I don't like. like. I don't like. like yeah. Wesley <laughs> is clearly going through some transference. Like he's just assuming he's men- mentor or like Mordok from before. He's just yeah, treating him yeah. like Mordok. Exactly. It's like you're still my friend. Yeah. And he and he's, it's weird. And, he's like, <laughs> and and Mega Memnon's like, well, why are you doing this? And he's like, dude, I just I, I thought you needed a friend and you'd remind me like of my friend. And I wish he was here with me right now, because you know, he would uh, he's a sweet, sweet man. And <laughs> uh, and you look like him. So, you know, like now you're my friend. And yeah, Mega Memnon's yeah, like, oh, just, just, sweet. just fill in for him. Yeah. yeah. Now put on this dress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, oh, it's fine. Please, for me. <laughs> it's because um, I want you to. <laughs> and, sen- well, and then so there's another, there's another <laughs> argument with the Klingons that, that ensues, which is about loyalty of going to battle. So there's two really, two or two different arguments. And so he basically says, hey, dude, we're going to, we're going to go over there. We're going to fuck their shit up, dude. Are you with us or what? And he's like, well, and what it boils down to is that he, or he's like, yeah, if, if we go and fight with them, I'm going to die with you. I'll yeah. die with this crew. He, so. He's badass. Yeah. Riker like, is like, hey, fuck yeah, it. Like, I'll, totally, yeah. I'll totally I'll roll with you. you. But, I'll roll with wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second, <laughs> though. Yeah. But. But you're yeah, stupid. There's a really big but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They probably 
aren't trying to kill you. Yes. Yeah. So let's make sure that also first you're day. being really stupid. But if you go <laughs> yeah. through with it, I'm here. I'm yeah. ride or die. You know. And 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 so mm-hmm. and so uh, Shao Kahn's like, well, uh, he tries to bring some reason because he's like, look, I've talked to him, I've dealt with him now for for like you know like three hours, and I feel like I got a good read on him now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like i feel like we're best friends and i feel like he wouldn't do that like he's like look maybe a spy but a traitor nah not that dude dude that dude was gonna fuck two of our ladies dude and he, <laughs> he didn't even bat an eye like he was just gonna fucking take two of them he was gonna do what it's also devils. just like the the logic of it just he, they all say it but the logic of it just doesn't make any sense yeah, like yeah. why would you send Riker first then and then yeah this, this doesn't like, make any sense at all yeah and then kill yeah. the ship slowly <laughs> like, right like this yeah like, yeah you think about it for more than not at all and it's yeah. like doesn't make any sense at all and <laughs> and so and so here there isn't there's another argument w- w- that that happens which is which is the argument that he makes is like the captain's like well we need to know the uh, the federation secrets so we could beat the shit out of these guys and he's like no i, I made an oath to them you know that pre- precedes you guys so i can't do that that precedes right not yeah, pre- precedes, precedes. Yeah, 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 and and he's like, well, you have to tell me. I don't give a shit. You're here. You're gonna. You're fucking with us. You're you're rolling with us. You got to tell me. And basically, Riker's like, no, I'm not gonna tell you. And he doesn't roll over. And the Klingon guy's like, well, that's good. That was a test because if you would have told me, I would have fucking killed you, dude. You fucking you <laughs> coward. Yeah, and, it's a cool uh, test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I dig it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so he, uh, they're basically like, dude, just calm down. I'm rolling with you guys. We're here, and we're gonna fucking, we're gonna go down there and beat the shit out of them if you, if you want. But it's silly. And then, so they're about to go over there, and 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 the the Klingon captain's like, ex- he gets really excited because he doesn't give up the Federation secrets. Like he's like, oh, you're loyal. I, if if yeah. you, he's hadn't. really happy. He's going yeah. to die there with him. Yeah. Like he, yeah. he thinks that's really cool of him. Like you know yeah. what, you are a cool guy. <laughs> you have honor. Yeah. Um, and this then completely so, contradicts everything I think about what's going on in the situation. But. I know. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> I, I and think it seems I honestly, like his teeth are about to fall out of his mouth any moment. It's, he's well, constantly like pursing his lips and pouting. Like he's like, he know, has to keep those teeth in one. That's probably actually what's going on. <laughs> yes. Uh, two. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think like a, a, a charitable reading you could have of the captain is that he being a Klingon is de- and like, you know, now they're in a time of peace, right? Like Kling- cause Klingons sure. are in an alliance with the Federation. So he could restless be, Klingons are a theme. Yeah. It, r- Klingons are indeed restless. They're wanting war. So he could be just trying to find any reason to go out in a blaze of yeah. glory honorably. Yeah. Cause he's yeah. also clearly the oldest person on the ship. Yeah. He's, he's probably, probably being killed. killed. Yeah. So maybe he's literally just doing this for the sake of like, I want, an honorable death now and like it, that's kind of his subtext yeah, too, but, yeah. Uh, wait hold on just real quick did anyone uh, or did the episode mention or establish at all like who the previous first officer on the, the pog was i don't think so yeah no it's possible. That, he, but he it's was possible. a pog collector <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's possible it was shao khan and then he got demoted yeah, yeah. for the okay. for the interim yeah because like i like it just uh, br- like it just popped into my mind the question of who would have had to kill Kargan if he were to weaken no oh, yeah, well, yeah well yeah yeah that's well, like true, before that's Riker, before shao Riker khan. if shao he khan. wasn't part of the equation yeah. shao khan um, didn't do it he's shao khan you know yeah he was just fucking rushing with the shoulder and then <laughs> um and then so so then he's like hey i i trust you now you're my you're my you're my man dude bob you're my number one man and uh <laughs> so he's like hey so i trust you so when we get down there you're gonna fucking shoot when we when we pull that drive by you're gonna <laughs> shoot the guy <laughs> You're gonna shoot the gun, dude. Here's the here's the Uzi. You take yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so so he's like, you're gonna call out, and we're gonna you're gonna be the guy who fucking shoots, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got initiate. Like the exact yeah. opposite of what Picard yeah. did with O'Brien. Yeah. 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 Imagine yeah. Picard told O'Brien, "No, you do it. It's your yeah. idea. It's your idea. You got a killer." Uh, and so so Riker turns on the the tracking beacon, and he's like. 
And then the Klingon's like, what is that? Give it to me here. And he takes it and he puts it in his pocket. And he's like, oh. And then and then Worf's like, oh, the tracking beacon has come on. Oh, fa, 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 fa. Uh, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so. He just says um, his, his, like, uh, an anagram of his names. <laughs> 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 and so and so Picard tells him, hey, when we get closer, beam Riker straight into the fucking bridge, dude. Yeah. Bring him in here. And so they're it's getting they're gonna go head to head, dude, and it's it really exciting. The fucking nerves are 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 we're we're getting we're getting and to me this is the most excitement I've I've felt in a, on a Star Trek episode. Because I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Real danger. And then that bullshit. Oh, there's a fucking... Everyone's <laughs> coughing. People can't breathe. No, real shit, dude. People are fighting. War, war shit. Yeah, war yeah. shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so... And, and, and Riker, you see how smart he is and how, like... Because mm-hmm. not only did he, like, beat Shao Kahn to prove that he was above him, like, rank-wise, he, he just knew how to outthink them, basically. And yeah, basically, yeah. He, uh, I don't know if he ever becomes captain in any of this, this series, but he's great, man. I want to see him become captain. And so <clears throat> when they get close, they beam up uh, the beacon, whoever's holding the beacon, and it happens to be the captain of the, of the warbird. Uh-huh. And, uh, or whatever, is it called a warbird? Uh, yeah. It's a bird of prey. Bird of prey, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. So then he gets beamed up, and then uh, Shao Kahn's like, what the fuck? And then Riker just literally sits down, and he's like, I'm the captain now. Yeah, right. literally <laughs> the, the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the Klingon uh, captain gets gets uh, beamed up to the ship's bridge, and immediately he's like, "What the fuck is this? Whoa, where am I?" Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and and, yep, and he's, a, he he's out his gas. He's, yeah, he pulls out his. <laughs> yeah, literally, he's about to just fucking <laughs> kill him. <everyone. laughs> yeah, he's like, "Well, fuck you. Take a take a." Take, why don't you suck on this? And Worf's like, no, <laughs> fuck you. And he stuns him. And then Data like disarms him. And he's like, no, sir. You fuck with the wrong people, dude. This is Luke Picard ship, dude. Fuck you. Look, I'm adding this, but this is what the subtext I'm getting, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. And so in, uh, in the Klingon ship, Riker's in charge now. And this is awesome, dude. He, he basically is telling them like, dude, this is what we're going to do. Take off the cloaking device. And he's like, no, like, no. And he's like, I'm the fucking captain. You do what I say, you you idiot. Mm. And he's like, okay. And he takes off the cloaking device and it reveals the, the ship. And then he's, uh, they're hailing the, the Klingon ship and Riker comes on and he's like, Hey, this is Riker. The captain of the park. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, uh, you guys should surrender to me. And it's, yeah. it's a real baller move, dude. And yeah, I love it. It's too. great. I <laughs> love this scene. Yeah. Because because he's doing the, the perfect move. And Picard yeah. also knows exactly what he's yeah. doing. So Picard's yeah, yeah. like, you know what? Yeah, we'll we'll surrender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's oh, like, no. right, we'll, 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 right yeah, he's like, okay, we'll, we'll lower we'll lower our shields and we'll 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 surrender to you. Yeah, it's great. And yeah, and then and then they beam back the ca- the the Klingon yeah. captain. Honor is preserved. No one yeah. dies. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect resolution to what's and going so, on. And so so the captain gets beamed up, and he's like he's like, oh, you should have killed me. I don't want your command. You're like he, he, he's because he's not honorable, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he he basically. Says, but you tricked me and he's like either way you can have it back uh, this is bullshit you know and then uh, he he tells him he tells him, all right well then return to your station uh, and Riker doesn't move and he growls dude he growls mm-hmm. at him like challenging him yeah and the yeah, captain yeah. just fucking just bonks him dude boom and it, this is really cool of Riker because he could have just been like nah fucking left and then there would have been a weird like power struggle because like then Shao Kahn would have to kill him and he, the politics of the ship would have been really weird. Yeah. But how he did it was really cool. He yeah. basically took one in the face. Yeah. Cause he knew that's the only way he can like honorably regain control of the ship. Yeah. Is by yeah. beating him in combat. Yeah. And so he basically throws the fight. Yeah. It's great. It's like, you know, and that's why I do Clyde, think it's yeah. kind of like totally weird though, because just prior to that, he was kind of aggressively relinquishing command to him. It's like, you take this fucking back. Like, I do yeah. not want this. Yeah, and then when he says, fine, I'll take it back, go back to your station. Then he's like, well, I don't want to go back to my station. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He has to, he has to offer some token resistance. I think that's yeah, exactly yeah. like he yeah, has yeah. to give some, but, but it makes it so blatantly clear that it's a token yeah. resistance. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know, I but guess in 
Klingon culture, that's enough. Yeah, and yeah. it's all pop and circumstance for for Klingons, basically. Like this is yeah, just them a- being like snooty. This is yeah. their version of being like really formal. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of how it ends up feeling when I think about yeah. it that way. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, you uh, have Shao Kahn who approaches uh, Riker, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, you understand Klingons more than more than I thought you did. You're you're a good dude." Yeah. And then even Riker says, "Ah, thank you, my friend." And he basically escorts him. Uh, he escorts him to like their transporter room or whatever. And uh, the, the I think they I think they're they're going to be long life friends. The Shao Kahn. They should do a movie Shao Kahn and the Riker. Um, <laughs> and so they yeah. give him back, and they see that uh, Riker has a big old shiner on his on his well, his whole face is red, dude. He got yeah, really, yeah. He really got like fucking his whole like right cheek. He yeah. got he did get punched by a very yeah. very strong person. Like Klingons yeah. are super strong, so yeah, it's yeah. Chumley strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then, and then, uh, so he he uh, he's talking to the captain, and he basically says, uh, "Oh, it's probably the shortest assignment that anybody's gotten." And they make a joke about it, about that shit. And he basically says, uh, "Riker says I learned a lot about about the Klingons, though, in in that short time that I was with them." And uh, Picard's like, "Well, you you didn't learn when to duck." And he's like, "No, it's when not to duck." Would yeah, be more accurate. It's great. And it's it's a real. Real baller fucking uh, thing to say. Yeah. And he basically tells Worf to escort him back to the medical bay. And uh, I don't know. This is just a good episode. Like everyone's like tighter because of it. And like, it's great. Yeah. It's yeah, a really yeah. great episode. Yeah. I think the mm-hmm. only part of the episode I, I am not super thrilled about is the whole like uh, Mega Man Run. Yeah. And Wesley. Yeah. yeah. And because like, me, me too. Me too. That That's the only thing that takes away from this episode. But but the rest is so good that I didn't even mind Wesley because because it's like it was just so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really and like it's weird. I don't know how, how you guys thought, but I thought initially the twist was going to be that um, Agamemnon put the bacteria on the ships oh. to prove that he can smart. solve a problem. Yeah. But yeah. it got away from him. That and, makes that would, you know, that would be more that would be interesting. I thought that interesting, but I guess it would also have been like very convoluting. Yeah. It would have been convoluted. It would have added a lot more bulk to the script and kind of detracted from what's really going on, which is the Klingon politics. Yeah. So I yeah, think yeah. I think it would have. But that's what like, I was watching it with Sarah, and we were both like, "That dude's suspicious as fuck. Like he's doing something." You know, I'm I'm guessing that like his arc uh, within the episode was purely meant as like an alternate take on like just another dimension of like yeah. disparate cultures meeting and like not quite understanding each other at first, but you right. know being open to each other's you know procedures and customs right. and trying to figure out what works best for each. But it was it was, um, just, it was just le- the less interesting. Yeah, it was more like, hey, here is a very boring version of the exchange <laughs> yeah, yeah. program idea, but here's the more exciting one over there. Yeah, because because with Agamemnon, it's less culture and more like workplace. It's it's yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's workplace culture. Yeah, yeah, which is the the worst type of culture. <laughs> and, and, and Riker learns a little Please, more about Worf too. Like they <laughs> they, I feel like Worf and and Riker become closer because he learns him his culture and and yeah. and Worf's like oh like that's cool that you learned about and, and it's then, a better understanding of Worf in general because you yeah. realize that. He, his personality isn't necessarily a Klingon personality. It's yeah. a Worf personality. That's basically him trying to conform to a Klingon identity that he doesn't natively have. So yeah. it's, it's, it makes his character way more interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, but. I would say this is as close to a 10 as, as I'm going to get yet. Uh, oh. I'm going to give it a nine, nine sh- starships right. out all of right. 10. All right. What about you, Dan? Uh, I think I give this one an eight. Oh, okay. Okay. I'd also mm. give it a nine. Um, cause, yeah. cause I, I, I tend to enjoy when bigger bombastic characters show up in Star mm-hmm. Trek. Like <laughs> I, I <laughs> <laughs> like I really liked the, the outrageous Okona cause you know, he's a lot of fun. He's not bombastic, yeah. but he's like, you know, he's got a lot going on in terms 69, of 69, bro. <laughs> he's got aspects of him were bombastic. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot yeah. of personality and yeah. these Klingons had tons of personality. It, it, it made them like a, a pleasure to just watch them interacting with a character like Riker, you know? No. Shut and up. you kind of like you, you go through an arc with Clegg. Yeah. You see, yeah. You see him being distrustful and then opening up and kind of, you know, 
and it feels like, completely natural. And understanding. Yeah. Never, yeah. We, we, like never, we never saw Riker fuck that lady. Cling on. It's yeah. so much more emotionally like deep than Shao Kahn. Yeah. You know what would have been better than uh, Agamemnon coming over if they brought a Klingon over? Because why didn't they oh. exchange a Klingon and, and an officer? Well, yeah, that was also part of like I, I had meant to ask this earlier, but it's like how does this exchange program work? It's just like. Just Ooh. send someone. It's not an exchange. What, it's what roles sending. or positions are considered? How is that determined? Yeah. How did this Klingon ship even agree to this? Yeah, they never really talked about it. It just the only time you see the captain was when he's like, "Yeah, we'll bring him on board." You know, it's, it's like, like, "Yeah, sure, why not? We love cooperating." <laughs> la- la- last time we had O'Connor, what? he fucked all of our ladies here. <laughs> yeah, it because because then I think it would have been interesting to see you know. Obviously, Riker interacting with the Klingons is interesting. It would have been interesting seeing a Klingon interacting yes. with Enterprise and sticking like a, sticking out like a sore thumb next to Worf. Yeah, yeah. because Worf mm-hmm. is the Klingon that is fully adherent to Enterprise and Starfleet. You know, well, that actually could have been really interesting to see. Yeah, no, you're right. Because totally. Agamemnon just is not that, he's not interesting. He's, he's kind of yeah. annoying. Yeah. And and Wesley's actually fine in this episode, yeah. but he's oh, just yeah. and, he's just annoying by proxy because he's next to Agamemnon. That's basically the, the issue. And it's not like his actual advice is like bad or anything. Yeah, it's he's just, just like she's like stop complaining. Like you, you you're not like just just you, you made a mistake. Move on. Like don't dwell on it. Like it like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. You know what would have made it really good though, if Wesley near the end of the episode. Uh, called Mega Memnon Mordok. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good guy, Mordok. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like that guy who has, who's like, I have two black friends, but he can't tell them apart. Those sort are of things. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. What a great episode. A lot yeah. of fun. That was a matter of honor. So, and uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is fun. Next week, we're going to. All I'm going to say is we're going to watch next week The Measure of a Man. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to hype it up. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. It's the just where they're all measuring each other's dicks. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That is exactly <laughs> what it's about. And that is exactly why it has such a reputation in the Star Trek yeah. community. Yeah. 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 The, the Measure like, of a Man. They're yeah. like, you guys, you, this is so controversial. <laughs> they showed Picard's dick. <laughs> I will TV. say. Um, so they what I'm going to. Half of it. What I'm going to do is. So Dan, you have access to both the original version and the extended version, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Ricardo, I can get you access to the extended version as well. Okay. So the one uh, I I hear you when you say extended version. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So we're, I guess next week let's, let's watch the extended version. Cause um, that'll be new for all of us. Cause I haven't seen the extended version before. Cool. So I think that would be really interesting. Um, But but yeah, but yeah, Uh, this was newbie star Trek, everyone. I hope you guys Ooh. have enjoyed. Uh, if you like things we do in general, you know, like we do other things too, you know, God, like we also. <laughs> gardening. <laughs> yeah, gardening, uh, cooking, cooking. Uh, some house cleaning. Yep. Uh, another podcast called the Future to Frames Film Podcast, where we recently, like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, just released a commentary track for Super Mario Brothers, which was. Plumbing's a game, and not like the others who get all the fame. Wait a minute, that's not the right thing. That was a TV show. <laughs> That movie would have been vastly improved by yeah. having that song. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it should have had it. By having any Mario song. <laughs> I love Alan <laughs> Silvestri, great composer, but come on. <laughs> It was probably composed by Alan Silvestri technically, but they just raided his library. Yeah, yeah. It's probably just like the off cuts he had already made that didn't belong in any other movie. And he just yeah, this was cool. like just leftovers from Back to the Future 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, f- we watched it. Uh, I, I was losing my mind because I, <laughs> I did not... I hadn't you seen. You didn't it since remember I, just how unsuper Mario it was, did you? No, I also <laughs> didn't remember how ugly it is. <laughs> oh, it is an, yeah, it's a ugly movie in in oh, every yeah. in every way. <laughs> um, but but yeah, that that came out on the Future Frames Film Podcast, and also we have a YouTube channel, Fugitive Games, where we're doing let's plays and streams. Right now, me Marvin, I'm streaming a lot of Mass Effect Legendary Edition because. Uh, I have only ever beaten La- Mass Effect 1, 
So I'm going to go beat I it again. I didn't realize you so, never beat two. No, I never beat two. I couldn't finish two because of my initial playthrough of it. I was so angry about the, the way they changed the guns <laughs> working that I was, I, I couldn't get over it. I didn't even meet my crew. <laughs> I I was just so angry that they I just love the idea of a captain like getting so mad they just throw their rifle to the floor <laughs> and then they walk right past an entire line of people looking to shake their hand. No, no, not even walk walking by them. I turned around and left in the other opposite direction. You just jumped out the window of the ship. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck y'all. You changed the way guns work. The fuck is this? We had deep lore about how guns have infinite ammo. Now they have heat sinks that are limited. This is stupid. Anyway, we're uh, going to Mass Effect <laughs> Legendary Edition. Also, we're going to Grand Theft Auto Vice City and going through Phoenix Wright Justice for All. In fact, we're at the tail end of Justice for All. And, uh, yeah, we're finally reaching the soon. beef of the last case. Yeah, we should be game. we should be finishing that off pretty soon. I know Justice for All has been running a bit long, so we're gonna um uh we might switch back depending on our schedule to seven videos a day of a week schedule and see if we can uh, go through our sure, catalog. Sure. A bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Well, we don't know for sure. We'll, we'll check our schedule cause it's, it's been a bit busy, but anyway, if you want to find all that stuff, all you got to do is go to fugitive frames.com. You can find all that shit. So take your pick. Anyway, next week we're going to wash, wash, uh, next week we're yeah, gonna watch <laughs> dirty episode. Next week we're gonna watch the Measure of a Man Extended Edition. So that'll be a fun episode. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a good time. But in the meantime, stay safe. I know uh, canonically, right now as we're recording this in LA, they just released all the COVID restrictions. So, but still, stay safe. You know, you never know for sure. So, stay safe, everybody. And Keep uh, we'll it sleazy. See- <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yeah I'm, uh, we'll see you guys next week goodbye later guys Mega Man 9